Just waiting for the recording. Okay, so if you remember, we did do um, a, a Web3 project in uh, week six, and uh, we developed a Web3 application, a decentralized application on uh, the Algorand blockchain. So today we have uh, Cosimo from Algorand. I hope you all remember him. And uh, we'll be just looking at presentations from my uh, Didier and Martin. They'll just start in a few. So if you have, uh, we'll let Martin start, then Yedidia can follow. If you have any questions, you can just take note as they do their presentation. And then you can go ahead and ask the questions after the presentation. So if there is no anything else to add from the team, I'll just uh, forward it to Martin. I see he's already in the call and uh, we can start uh, the presentations. Over to you, Martin. Hi. Uh, Hi, everyone. Yabba Bell just sent a note. He's just running a couple of minutes late. I know he wanted to be here. So maybe we can just wait a handful of minutes. And um, yeah, he's just on his way in. Hi, Cosimo. Hi, everyone. How, How are you? Doing? Good, good. How's... I don't know where you live or where you are right now. Italy. How's... Which part? Uh, southern Italy. Uh, okay. The region is called Puglia. Puglia, okay. The, it's, the very, part, it's very the part, hot right now. <laughs> the part with the good food. Yeah, almost. Now, Italy, over, over Italy, we hit pretty well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I know every region always says that they have the best food. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> but we all, we all know it's actually Puglia that has the best, that has the best food. Um, so, Martin, do you want to just wait a couple of minutes? Maybe we can just, uh, we can... Cosimo, I don't know if you have any questions for the group or if the group has any questions for Cosimo while we just wait for a couple of minutes to get started. I know I had the chance to uh, have a, a very, very high level overview of uh, some uh, web page uh, that, that thing. I don't know if there's a project that has been evolved, but I'm uh, look, looking forward to see the results of your work. Any questions for Cosimo while we wait to get started? Just looking in the chat, is there any questions here? Now I'm running so as you can wait. So maybe, Mart, uh, <clears throat> Cosimo, I, I have a question for you. I've, I'm new to the blockchain space as well. I'm busy learning. Um, are there any other proof of stakes that blockchains that are actually operational today? Yeah, there are there are uh, uh, several proof of stake uh, blockchains, but are uh, all different from the kind of proof of stake that Algorand implemented that we call pure proof of stake to differentiate uh, from others proof of stake that are basically delegated, bonded proof of stake. Uh, uh, for example, the, the one, the model on which uh, Ethereum want to transition to. Uh, but yes, uh, the, the, the form of proof of stake that Algorand implemented, which is uh, pure proof of stake is a unique in its kind. And what's the what's the delay on the Ethereum side? Uh, you mean the, the le protocol latency or no? The move the move from proof, proof of work to proof of stake. Uh, why uh, they are del delaying this? Yeah. Um, I don't I don't really uh, know because this is has to do with the engineering in Ethereum part, but. Switching uh, from from proof of work to proof of stake is not easy mm -hmm. uh, because you have to consider all the legacies that you have and also coordinate uh, an effort on an infrastructure that is public and permissionless with open source contributors. Uh, it's it's a really really complex task to coordinate, and also, for example, 
Algorand choose to implement this from the beginning, from scratch. Uh, and so the architecture from the very beginning was being designed and optimized for the proof of stake working principles. Uh, while other blockchain that have to transition from one kind of consensus to the other, as a lot more difficult to do that because they have a lot of legacy things to deal with. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know that we have, so we just finished uh, last week, we finished uh, selecting the sort of tracks and we have about a uh, little bit, about eight or 9%. So three people who've decided they want to go for a web three career um, afterwards. So we have uh, two of them are here, Remet and Jeremy. Um, I think there's a lot of, in brief discussions with many other people, there's a lot of people who sort of said, you know, this field is so new and so different. And I think that people found the sort of getting their heads around um, what is Web3 um, a little bit difficult. I don't know if you have two minutes to describe what your uh, way, what you were doing before you sort of took the pill and went to Web3. Um, so uh, do, do you want me to clarify my background before joining? I mean, how did you make that? How did you make that transition? Yeah. Um, was was uh, first of all was an unplanned, uh, and uh, the, the first driver was the fact that the, my curiosity was drawn by this new field, and the fact that this complex uh, distributed machine at the time I was uh, looking at them. Uh, were very promising uh, in uh, solving some kind of problem that I faced while working as an electrical uh, engineer. I had a background uh, as a engin an engineering background, uh, so there there were some software engineering skills that I inherited from my previous background, uh, working with mission critical software that somehow are similar to software that you deal with, with in, uh, in, uh, in, in smart contract. Um, but the, this entire movement and, and architecture open up uh, so many possibilities to impact business model and uh, enable new use uh, cases and deal with new technology that somehow my curiosity was drawn by it. And this was the principal driver that pushed me to, to, to study and, uh, and review the technology and actually put my hands on it. And I simply worked as a self-learner at the time uh, by doing, by uh, trial and error and studying uh, because the material at the time was not so available. Right now we have so many more, at least orientation, uh, material, uh, documentation, people that can mentor other people, uh, so it's less stuff than the one, the, the time I first being there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see Yevabel has joined, so I'm um, going to hand over to him, and then I guess to Martin as well, but Yevabel, over to you. Uh, thanks, thanks Aaron for holding, and thanks Cosimo for making the time again, and I think you definitely will be the, the person to see what has been achieved and uh, probably also give them really honest feedback, knowing that it's one, you know, one week work, you know, and, and evaluating what you expected and how far um, they managed to do. Uh, so that, that kind of feedback really like in real life, like if you were to hire them or someone else to hire them and if they were to do this thing in one week, what does it mean, you know? So just that kind of communication is useful. We know, you know, it's, it's really diverse. You know, giving that kind of comment sometimes is not straightforward, easy. But by just you, given that your experience, given you have seen a lot of people doing these things here and there, so having that kind of feedback, I can't give that feedback. I, you know, I don't can't give that feedback. So it would be very, very useful if you could, yeah, you know, see here uh, what they managed to do, and then also then let them know your opinion. That would be very valuable. Sure, sure. Awesome. And then Martin, to you then. All right. Uh, thank you, Yabibal. Uh, thank you, Arun. And also thank you, uh, Cosimo. 
uh, about also your introduction and uh, what you are sharing to us about uh, self-learning. And I also believe that uh, self-learning is uh, actually the ultimate way of learning anything at the end of the day. Yeah, so I'll just take you through a brief and quick demo concerning the Algorand and how I understood and also the challenge that was posted for us. Uh, and just basically all that you are requested to do, I went and thought about it, tried to add some few things and also uh, just to look at and appreciate uh, the Algorand blockchain. Yeah, so uh, I'll just like to start, uh, I'd like to start. Yeah, so just a moment. Yeah, so basically the problem statement that uh, we were given uh, was that uh, Ten Academy is the client and the, the client would like us to solve a particular challenge of ensuring that certificates from Ten Academy are available to all trainees in a secure way and also, if possible, that uh, these certificate holders can benefit from smart contract actions now and also in the future. Uh, at present, uh, the, the way Ten Academy handles issuing of certificates is through simple PDF files. And Ten Academy, uh, because of uh, studying without the box, and uh, they realized that it's good to uh, understand about blockchain technology. And so they partnered with Algorand and uh, the Algorand blockchain is uh, the foundational element of the NFT, the non-fungible token, which is what they want to implement uh, alongside with the certificate. So uh, you generate uh, and this, you generate and distribute an unfungible token as a certificate that will present successful completion of a weekly challenge that is uh, to the trainees and allow the trainees with those NFTs to interact with a smart contract to perform uh, predefined actions. So yeah, so that was basically what uh, the problem statement was. And I'd like to explain uh, what I particularly understood and how I modeled my system to be able to incorporate uh, these particular concepts that uh, this particular uh, solution to this problem. Uh, so I'll just uh, go to the next part. So as you can see in the screen uh, is a DFD a da a data flow diagram. And the first thing that we see is that uh, we start of, we first of all start by signing in or by, by logging or signing up into account. If you don't have an account, you will sign up. And uh, once you sign up, we of course, we'll gather your unique details, uh, like for example, the ID, the email and so forth. And then after completing this, we'll sign up will notify you to activate your account. And then after successful activation, we will redirect you to the login and then you will sign in. Now, uh, once you sign in, it will uh, request you for the, after you've put in your new username and password, it will give you a token, which will help us to track which particular role you are in. And this will be able to assist us in just the entire modeling of the system. And uh, this, once you do that, once you've logged in, the next step that you will want to do is you will connect to your wallet. Uh, I don't know whether you can be able to see my cursor, but I hope so, so that I can show where I am in that particular data flow diagram. So uh, once you have logged in and you have been issued uh, the, the token and you are able to now get in, you will go and connect to your wallet. And then the wallet will provide us with some of your account, with, with some of your details, which we will use uh, when doing the other actions. Like for example, now after you've logged in, you've given us the account details from your wallet, uh, we will be able to, if you are a trainee, you will be able to request for certificates from the stakeholder or consumer. The stakeholder, the consumer, that is, for example, now the staff uh, at this particular instance. And then uh, it will do some checks uh, to check whether this particular uh, certificate belongs to that particular uh, con uh, to that particular user, that trainee, or if uh, it belongs to another person. So there are some some checks that ca are carried out to prevent the wrong certificate landing on the wrong hands. And so, 
after those checks are done, uh, the stakeholder will uh, enter the unique details uh, that are going to be, I'll just uh, show you when I'll get to the particular demo, I'll show you how I uh, will put in those unique details. And then after that, we'll be able to uh, request for that, uh, sorry, after that we'll be able to, after that we'll be able to ask the stakeholder, uh, we'll be able to ask the stakeholder to enter the unique details of the to enter the unique details uh, of, of the certificate they need. And then once they do that, it will notify, it will send a notification to the admin and the, uh, the admin will, uh, to, the, to the staff and the staff will now re accept or reject that particular request. And once they accept or reject that particular request, they can be able, the user can be able to see their status and they can be able to download their particular uh, file if it's downloading. And also it will send an email to show you that uh, the, 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 the particular certificate has reached and then you can be able to uh, go to it and download it likewise. Uh, also on, on the front of the, on the, on the staff, you will also be able to You'll also be able to upload uh, new certificates. And once you upload a new certificate, there is the other uh, user who is the admin, who is going to kickstart the process and uh, start up an application, which is going to kickstart the, pro the whole process in the, uh, in the Algorand blockchain. Then after that, it will issue, of course, uh, some unique details to identify the NFT and to identify the, uh, that particular uh, application in the blockchain. So once all that is set up and it has been set up within a certain period of time, then the user can be able to uh, carry out their particular actions and receive their certificate. So that is just uh, briefly on, on how the entire system works. And I want to believe that uh, as we continue on, uh, you'll be able to see how this all this comes into play and you'll be able to understand how. So the next thing I just wanted to show is uh, the features which are currently in the system. So uh, there is the role-based token authentication and uh, basically this encodes the roles into the tokens and uh, the concepts that are in this particular uh, feature is just authentication, encoding, recording. Uh, and I carried out some bit of tests and uh, it's a completed task that is. Uh, the other one is, uh, Sorry, the other one is online wallet connection. Uh, so it extracts wallet account details. I wanted to check out how I could run the tests for this particular case, uh, but I think time caught up with me. So I wasn't able to run those particular tests, but I'll go and find out uh, how I can be able to just uh, quickly do those tests and uh, ensure uh, that everything is all right. So then uh, it's a completed task and just the concepts of QR connections on connection handle on disconnect handle. M most of this was, I was handling it on the React uh, side. And then uh, there's the generating of the NFTs. Uh, this is just basically generating an ASA, that's an Algorand standard asset. And this Algorand standard asset is what is going to be uh, requested by the, by the trainee. That is the, the staff is the one who kickstarts, the, the staff is the one who generates this. And then after they start the staff generating this, the next thing that can be done is uh, generating a particular application that will kickstart on the blockchain, which is done by the admin. And then after that, uh, it will be able to uh, go now to be requested for. So also there's that donating, just allowing of simple donations. So the concepts here was just asset transfers, atomic transfers. Uh, then also the other the other thing was uh, requesting and opting into an asset. So that is when a particular trainee wants to get their certificate. So when they want to get their certificate, they can request and opt in to that particular asset. And the concepts that are basically there was just payment of transactions, signing of transactions, yeah, and all that. Then the, la the last uh, feature that is over there is accepting slash denying of uh, requests, which uh, you can accept or reject the opportunity for removing that particular, uh, removing that particular, removing that particular, uh, that particular is ASA, uh, depending. So just basically the concepts there was just deleting a transaction. So, uh, we'll just, um, I, I just like to say that there's some few things that I think 
could be impl implemented in the future, which I, I intensely want to look forward to implementing. And that is, first of all, adding an asset ID to the token, uh, revoking a certificate. So, sorry, guys, I, I lost my, my... You lost uh, what, Cosimo? Hello, Cosimo, can you hear us? <clears throat> Let's wait him until he comes back. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Hey, Cosimo, are you back? <clears throat> can you guys hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you. Uh, yes, you can hear you. Sorry, I, I lost my, my connection. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry about that. I don't are know. you back now? I, I I lost my connection on the on the second table uh, of contents. Yeah, I think he was immediately after that here. So yeah, but maybe you can go back one slide, uh, Martin. Hello, Martin. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you're able to hear me. Yeah, just go on, continue from this. Right. I mean, it's almost he has seen this. But then mm. just the next slide is just immediately after. So, okay. So, uh, just basically, these are the other features that are over here. That is donating of assets uh, and also just donations, simple donations, which the concepts are basically asset transfer, atomic transfers. The other one is uh, requesting and opting into assets. This is just uh, the natural part of uh, making the contract, uh, getting into the contract and making the payments. And this is basically being on the concepts of payment of transactions and signing of transactions. And then there's accepting slash denying of requests, that is accepting or rejecting the opportunity of uh, getting that particular certificate. And this, the concept is basically just deleting our transactions. So uh, those were the features uh, at large, which are basically in this particular system. And I was saying that uh, in future, what I want to add is, I want to add an asset, I, I want to add the asset ID, the asset, ID once I get it, I want to add it to the token. This will uh, ensure smooth flow from start to finish from both from all ends, even after the authentication. Then uh, another thing that I'd like to add is a revoking of a certificate that is invalid at any time. So if later, for example, the admin realizes that this person obtained their certificate through malicious means or through uh, getting maybe fake algos or just any malicious thing, they can uh, be able to revoke that particular certificate. Then uh, donations to be uh, based on performance in the school. So like uh, once somebody performs quite well, they can be able to uh, receive more and more donations and it can be automated. Then basically there's the, also the notification icon in the system. Uh, that's just a front end uh, feature. Then uh, lastly, to deduct algos from the pay it forward model uh, in the 10 academy in the 10 academy there's, there's normally that paid forward model once you get into a job so i think uh, this uh, we, if we can be able to implement it using uh, this uh, blockchain technology it can also be quite good uh, because you can be able to easily follow up uh, with somebody uh, as, 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 as time goes by so uh, i'd like now to go to the implementation and i'll stop sharing so that you can share uh, my screen. I have just one question on the second table. On the last point, there was uh, this concept of deleting a transaction. Uh, what do you mean by deleting a transaction? You, do you mean uh, denying or rejecting the transaction request, right? Because in, 
you cannot delay the transaction from the blockchain. So my question is, what do you mean by delaying the transaction? Well, it was uh, basically when you want to uh, re reject, you, you can just delay by uh, getting that particular, there's that particular asset delete uh, transaction, which I saw in the ALGO SDK. So when I was implementing that uh, asset delete transaction, uh, I found that it was doing uh, basically what I was thinking in mind. Maybe I think I can get deeper into it and I can get to understand that particular concept uh, so that I can know best how to implement uh, that particular portion here. Okay. All right, so I want to now share my screen so that uh, I can be able to now, uh, sorry. Uh, so that I can be able to uh, are you able to see my screen? Not yet. All right. Right. Now, now it's now it's game. Just don't worry. All right. Okay. So uh this is uh basically signing up. You'll just put in your username, your email, your password, and then you'll come and put in uh, which particular role you are in, whether you are, you are in the staff, you are in the trainee, you are in the admin, uh, whichever type of uh, role that you are particularly are in. And then another thing that uh, we're going to be using to, we're going to use at the end is to check our particular, uh, sorry, uh, what you're going to be doing is we're going to use a particular extension over here uh, uh, called AlgoSigner, this one which will be will enable us to just uh, basically monitor the accounts, the assets, and also just monitor our algos uh, when as you're continuing with it. So uh, after uh, after signing up, you'll go ahead and log in. I've already created the accounts because I just want this to go a bit quickly. I've already created the accounts, so uh, I created three accounts. That is the staff account. I created the training account and also I created the admin account. So this, the staff account is this one, uh, Martin, and uh, the password uh, is uh, just put in the password. So I log in. So once I log in, I just get into my dashboard and it will just show you just uh, some bit of uh, a small tutorial, like how the sitemap uh, after signing up, you can log in, connect to the wallet, uh, mint uh, your NFTs, monitor NFTs and uh, Award a trainee by either accepting, rejecting the beads, donating algos, and all these features uh, you can be able to get them from over here: minting, donating, accepting, uh, re accepting slash rejecting a request, fetching info. Yeah. So uh, I'll just first of all start by connecting to my wallet. So let me connect. Just a moment. So as you can see right now, there is, there is no uh, wallet. So let me just uh, connect. So I'll just click connect and I'll use Algorand wallet. It uh, provides a QR code and then uh, I'll just, it prompts me to connect. So it connects and then it will just be able to uh, quickly give me a uh, a short uh, overview of uh, my assets and also it will ex it will show me like how many algos i have in my particular uh in my particular account so that's just the part of connecting so it, you can connect to the test net and if you are already connected to the minute you can connect also to the minute but then now the only challenge is uh, for the minute you need some a uh, real cash at the, at the point i didn't have uh, the cash so i just use the test net so I'll just go back to the system and I'll log in. It's already saved it uh, in the cache memory. Actually, I think this one, I should just direct it immediately to the dashboard. So now once I'm in inside uh, the particular, uh, once, I, once I'm inside th this particular place, as you can just see, uh, it's, it's just a basic proof of concept, just basic overview. So uh, it's not really uh, to the best standard, maybe with uh, the with the user interface, but it's something that we can work on. So I'll just quickly uh, 
carry you through the minting of the NFT. So uh, with the minting of the NFT, I'll just uh, come here and I'll get my, uh, my account is uh, the staff account. So I'll just get this. Okay, actually it's over here, but I just wanted to do that so that I can I can get it. Now the the mnemonic phrase it's not uh, you're not supposed to uh, give out your mnemonic phrase, but uh, just uh, because of uh, this uh, proof of concept, uh, I was I was trying to figure out uh, how I'll, I'll bypass this. I think I got caught up with time. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, then. Uh, the next thing is you'll put in the amount that of algos that is needed to release this particular asset. So for example, like this one, uh, we just need one algo. So maybe if it was in the case of 10 Academy, maybe if it's to release a certificate, it could be 12 algos, maybe one algo per week, uh, whichever the case, or according to the value of the market at that time. Uh, so then uh, I'll just go to the unit uh, test. So that's, I'll just do demo. Six, then I'll just put the asset name and the person to award. Uh, so, sorry, I'll just put here Cosimo. This, it, it, uh, it gives me a list of the trainees uh, who are already in the system. So, uh, I had already created this account. So, uh, Cosimo is one of the trainees in that particular system. Then, the next thing is the asset URL. And I'd like to briefly explain what the asset URL is. The asset URL is uh, where I particularly... Okay, uh, it's okay. Uh, it's loading, but uh, I was storing my I was storing all PDFs uh, from I'm storing all my PDFs in an IPFS that is uh, linked with NFTs. That is a Web three dot storage, and in this particular uh, in this particular place is where I was. I was actually storing uh, this this particular asset. So let me just uh, quickly. I'll get this. I just put this in case. It's just in the interest of time, Michael um, and Martin, make it less, like kind of go to the main main points. All right, we no problem. Should, should wrap up like in five ten minutes. Okay. Probably five minutes. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm minting. I'm minting uh, the NFT. So just a moment, it takes some like two, yeah, so uh, it successfully uh, done that. Uh, so once once it does that, uh, the next thing is I'll kickstart the application from the side of the, uh, from the side of the admin. Login. So from the side of the admin, as I can be able to see as an admin, I see all the all all all, 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 all the certificates that are are ready and that need action. Like uh, currently, I can see that uh, there is this particular uh, asset that needs uh, action, which doesn't have yet uh, its application ID. So that's what I'll do. I'll just set up the application. Uh, so I'll just put in the NFT. Uh, now this is when I'll, I'll I'll just go to uh, once I set up I put it down to push it to the blockchain. Uh, what I want to do is I'll push it to the blockchain for some while as like uh, somebody can be able to access it within a period of uh, time. So I'll just say that in the next ten seconds uh, place it on the on that uh, particular window for thirty seconds. Uh, somebody can be able to access it within that period of time. Of course, this one should can be done from the back end. And then uh, the next thing is uh, the reserve. This is just the amount that uh, the basic minimum and it can increment on uh, 100,000, that's uh, 0.1 uh, algo. And the amount, of course, it was one algo. So this one, I'll enter my address and I'll just come over here. I enter my address. Okay. So I'll, I'll just come from the admin account. And before I even continue, I'd like to say that uh, with the uh, currently with the with the algo signer, uh, if you can be able to see, there is 
the amount that is over there for the for the staff it's 23 algos for the trainee is 12 algos and for the admin is uh, 18 algos that one algo is for the same of the transaction so let me just log out so now i'll i'll just log in as a, a trainee now this is already acting in the system now the trainee uh, currently there is no certificate for you there's no certificate for you. So you, what you'll have to do is you'll have to uh, uh, request an opt-in so that you can get that particular certificate. So I'll just put in my details. Uh, I'm doing this, uh, this, this information, I'm just doing it quickly because you can connect to the wallet and all that, but this is much more faster if I just come here and do this, it will save on our time. Then the amount of algos, that's one, uh, in, in terms of micro algos, that's one million micro algos, that makes one algo. Then the application ID, this is the last one over here. Uh, then the, the NFT ID, it's this one. And I'll get this, that's it. And then forgotten, sorry, uh, it, it actually sends an email. Immediately it's minted. It actually sends an email. I think I had logged it. Just let me. Uh, it actually sends an email, uh, like it will tell you that, uh, hello, uh, trainee, your certificate, uh, if you can be able to see my screen, uh, it, it actually sends you an email. Uh, uh, it's saying, hello, trainee XXX, your certificate has been uh, minted. Uh, then once we have done that, so once you have minted our certificate, the next thing we we'll want to do is uh, we'll now come in as the staff login sorry so uh, once i log in as the staff i'll want to accept that particular uh nft so it's just this one So I'll just accept the request. Take some bit of time. Yeah, so it's uh, actually successfully uh, accepted that request. So if I, it sends, it sends an email to the trainee saying that, hello trainee XXX, your certificate is ready for pickup. Click link below to access it. So if I click this link, Let me open it from over here. Don't know. So even when you when you log in as a trainee, you'll be able to see all your certificates. Just, So in the interest of time, I think let's just move on. But what is the, can you conclude it in one minute? Okay, so, okay, no problem. Uh, so uh, basically what this, yeah, it's, it's, it's opened and this is just the IPFS. You'll be able to get it. Then uh, once you just get it, you'll be able to open it. I think uh, it's... It's just uh, keeping on doing that. So uh, one thing we'll see is that uh, the, the algo that were to that particular trainee uh, was uh, 12, right now it's 11. On the other side, uh, it was uh, 24, now it's 25. Uh, and also this one had eight assets, had uh, 10 assets, now he has nine. And this uh, on this other side, he has six assets. So we actually see that it's actually doing uh, that particular option. And if I just, uh, for example, just that part, the last feature is this one for donating. And I'd like to just uh, do like, for example, I'd like to donate uh, two algos, one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, 
to the to maybe a trainee that is from the staff. Just a moment. Okay, so I, um, Martin, I will just now let's stop there. But great okay. that you can also donate and you will see it, right? So that's um, yeah. uh, just in the interest of time so that we have another um, presentation and also a discussion. So let's stop it there. But thanks. So okay. maybe Cosima, what I will do with that, let, maybe just you can give comment after the next presentation. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, good. Okay, so uh, yeah, so uh, sorry, uh, sorry for that. Uh, but I but, think we, we can we, we can l l at the end maybe just like now let's just move on. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, it's that's that's okay. So that was just the certificate. Uh, it generates the certificate, and then you can be able to see it. It's only yeah. it takes some bit of time uh, to Don't load. Worry. Okay, awesome. Uh, Yididia, you can continue. Okay, is my screen visible? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, let me try to go over the presentation quickly and I will proceed to the application demo. Uh, sorry. Okay, so digital certification distribution is wallet integration. This has been done for 10X or 10 Academy uh, certificate distribution. And we have been using Algorand at the blockchain platform. So the problem statement is that at present, certificates are distributed as simple PDF files without the ability to verify their authenticity, nor can trainer undertake some smart actions with the trainees or their contracts. And with today's available technology, anyone can pretend that uh, they are certified, certified by an university or training institution. And this issue has been exacerbated in African countries where verification might take lengthy period. Uh, so the solution or what I have been trying to do is as a solution, the proposed solution is to use a very secure, distributed, eco-friendly blockchain technology, Algorand. As Algorand uses pure proof of stake, it's really eco-friendly and doesn't cost any uh, regarding to the environment and to distribute these digital certificates. And what, uh, we'll, what the training organization will do is the training organization admins will create an NFT and mint that NFT to the blockchain for all trainees and we transfer the ownership to the trainees who completes the program by finally freezing the asset so that the trainee won't be able to transfer that specific NFT or specific asset to any other trainee. And the training organization will then publicly announce its crypto wallet address. And if someone can prove that they have received an NFT token directly from that address, from that given address, uh, one can con conclude that they have completed the program. So in our case, Ten Academy, uh, will publicly announce its crypto wallet address, its, its public address, and anyone verifying that they have got an asset or certificate being transferred from that specific wallet address or from that public address, uh, anyone can prove that they have uh, actually graduated from Ten Academy. So our target audience is our Ten Academy trainees, particularly for our scenario, for our case, Ten Academy trainees uh, will be using this uh, application as well as the academy, the organization itself, and any other training organizations, universities, or organizations that want to certify their employees can use this application. The tech stuff that, that I've used is for the front end, I've used ReactJS framework, Bootstrap for the uh, CSS, uh, CSS, CSS framework and SAS to compile. Back end, I've used Node.js and Mongo database. The tools and APIs I've used is uh, primarily have been using Pinata. The Pinata is a distributed file system. Uh, what I use Pinata for is I will be uploading the data or the metadata of the training every time uh, an, a trainer meets the asset to the blockchain. And they have used pure stake API. I, I use pure stake API to uh, primarily connect to Algorand's blockchain to the mainnet and to the testnet. But due to the, uh, I, I still don't have uh, Algorand on the mainnet, I've, I will be using the testnet, node, node mailer to send emails and test a dispenser to fill up some algorithms on the testnet, and for the deployment, I've used Cherry Coin Notify. So, for the future works, uh, for the current implementation, I've only implemented the wallet integration using Algo Signer, but I, I want to give uh, the organizations and any other customers other options, such as Para, Ledger, or Atomic wallet integrations, and asset overview option for on the application for the trainee side. Once the asset has been transferred to the trainee, 
the trainee should be able to look at his asset or his certificate on his own side and full automated, full implementation of automated based pipeline. This will be on the development side only. Uh, and I have learned to interact with the blockchain, uh, writing and deploying smart contracts, wallet management, and some best practices. The best reference I've used is the challenge document reference. Algorithm documentation was really the best and uh, good guidance on the in end application development. I've used Pure Stack API and uh, the last one is a certification, a digital certification distribution that's been already implemented by some other organization and they have a good implementation. So I've, I've taken some of the concepts from them. So going to the demo site. Uh, so the, this is the landing page. Someone can come and go to the admin or the training site. I will open the admin in the training on a separate tab. So the first thing what will happen is uh, uh, the application will prompt them to sign in uh, and I will sign in using the Algo Signer. And what it, will access, what it will request is the next request to access your wallet. It will be able to read the list of accounts in the wallet per supported ledger and send you request for transaction. So on every signature, it will there will be a pop-up from Algo Signer and the admin or the trainee should sign when making some kind of transaction. So I will grant this access. Uh, okay, so on the admin side, the admin side can look at the list of trainees and the admin can add training, the admin can select an account. Yes, so the admin can select an account and finally, the admin can also view the list of trainees that have already opted in. So the admin will have the option to accept or decline that specific opt-in. Uh, so what I will do is I will first add a training. I will add myself as a training. in the country, in the status, which is pass or fail. So the train is added. So for trainees that have, that has, that for trains that haven't passed, they, the asset could, can't be minted, but only for trainees that have passed the training, there will be an option to mint that specific asset. So now I haven't selected any, any account. When I try to mint that asset, it will ask me to uh, select an account before me thinking. My account could be found because I have first signed in using the Algo wallet. So here's the list of account. When I, if I go to the Algo signer, to the testnet, I have a couple of accounts. Uh, I will be primarily using the admin as a trainer and I will be using the trainee as a trainee in, in our case. So the trainee currently has zero assets in 10 Algos. This is for the transactions and the admin has one asset in some uh, algos here. So the admin's account is, it starts with ALX and something. So I will select that specific account AL, that starts with AL, ALX and goes on. So after selecting that account, I will meet that specific trainee's uh, asset. Uh, so when meeting in, the algo signer extension will pop up and uh, it will ask me to sign that specific tran transaction. And when I click sign, it will ask my password. So I have now successfully signed the transaction. Now behind on the back end, what will happen is the asset will be first, uh, that, that certificate or that metadata, the certificate in the metadata will be uploaded to the distributed file system, in my case, Pinata. And after it's been uploaded to the Pinata, the asset will be minted. And now we can see that it is already minted. And now if I go to the training side, I can first select an account. For the account, I will select the trainee that starts with OTU. This is the public address. So I will enter my full name, my email address, and my asset ID. Uh, as you can see in the description, once the trainer or the administrator of the organization meets an asset, the trainee will receive an email. In that, in that email, he will get an asset ID. So any trainee can't opt in unless they got an asset ID from the trainer. So what I've done in my case is I've tried to send an email and I've tried to build an emailing system so that once the trainer meets in 
the asset for a specific trainee, the trainee will be able to receive uh, to, to, to receive an email from the trainer. I used my own Gmail address for the emailing system, but the admin system will be able to use any emailing service. So I will have already gotten my asset ID and I will put my asset ID here and I will click opt-in. So when opting in, again, it, this is another transaction. So I'll go sign will pop up and uh, asks me to sign in. And after signing in, I have now successfully signed the transaction. So again, after signing the transaction, it will wait for some seconds. I think in, in, in a ground, it will wait for four seconds for the confirmation. So after it has been confirmed, the, tra the trains list or this specific list should appear on the trainer side. If I now go and refresh my page on the trainer side, I can now see that Lydia with this specific public address has opted in and the admin will have the privilege to either accept or decline. If I choose to decline, this will be removed from the list. But if I accept this, if I accept this specific request, this asset will be uh, completely transferred to the trainee. And finally, that asset will be frozen because the, we don't want the trainee to transfer that asset at, uh, after he has received that uh, asset. So I should, okay, so select the account for the admin. This is the account of the admin. Uh, if I first go to the algo signer, uh, we can see that the trainee now has, has opted in for one asset, but he hasn't yet gotten. The admin has two assets. So if I accept that request, again, the algo signer extension will pop up and I will be able to fill up my password and accept that transaction. And the transaction has been successfully signed and it will wait for a couple of seconds till the asset is completely transferred and we'll wait for confirmation. And now the asset has been transferred to the trainee and finally the asset has been frozen. And Wait. finally, that list will be removed and to the trainee, uh, he'll receive another email saying congratulations and he can visit his specific asset. And he can find all the details in the Gold Seeker Spurs KPI. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks. Great. So now we have, you know, the next seven minutes. And first, I will just invite Cosimo to his impressions and any other questions. Yeah, no, uh, this is great. Uh, given the time you guys had to do that and a couple of lessons that we had together, I think the result is, uh, is uh, awesome, it's good. Uh, and uh, of course, you managed to, to work hands on on this technology, so maybe you notice that uh, developing in Web3 really means interconnecting several skills, which are uh, usual uh, web engineering uh, with uh, these new kind of concepts like uh, chain assets, signatures, wallet, and uh, yeah. But I, I think you you guys managed to have a first. Uh, round trip uh, and hand to hand uh, project. Uh, of course, given the time you had, uh, there are things that can be improved in the in user experience, in the aesthetics, but this was not the, 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 the purpose of the project. For the purpose of the project was putting together different technology and make it work to meet an asset, distribute an asset. And I think that you showed both uh, two examples that accomplished that. Um, uh, one thing that uh, I would improve, uh, maybe in the first use case, uh, is uh, yes, interconnecting more the wallet so that you sh uh, should not have to pass the mnemonic phrase. So directly signing all the transaction directly from the wallet. But uh, I know that this can this is a thing that can be uh, improved with uh, with the time. Also, as for example, the the interconnection and the seamless. Uh, integration uh, with uh, distributed file like EPFS uh, to render the file uh, properly. But overall, I think the, the, the objective was achieved 
because you were able to deploy an application that communicates uh, with blockchain that actually meet uh, meet and transfer asset into the blockchain and do that by signing transaction from users world and uh, I think the this shows that uh, you guys understood the, the 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 main concepts and this is the first stepping stone uh, that allow you to to start working more and more on these topics. Right. And do you have any questions to them? And no. Yeah. So, uh, both from uh, Martin uh, and uh, uh, you did, yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, you, you can. You did, yeah. You did, okay. Um, I I would like to know uh, your first impression uh, uh, in working with uh, Algorand technology, and also what was the main pain points, few pain points on working uh, on uh, a new web free application coming from a knowledge that is a web development knowledge. Maybe Martin, do you want to first start? Okay, I don't know that you can hear me. Uh, <clears throat> so for, hear yeah, for, uh, for, from my end, I think it was a, it was an interesting experience because there are many things that uh, we were able to learn that were new and uh, learning new things, of course, increases your skill set. And I think for me, that was first uh, priority that I got to learn from that. And also another thing is that when working with new frameworks, you have to be uh, very quick and also you have to have an open mindset to be able to learn new things each and every single time. I think for me, that's what I can say from my end uh, when it came to that. But also another thing is that uh, the experience, I, tr I was looking at uh, Algorand and I also tried to check out other blockchains, uh, but uh, there's that concept of the proof of stake and uh, the proof of work. And I realized that, uh, okay, currently like what Algorand has uh, built upon the other, like what the likes of Ethereum and uh, the bitcoins, the, 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 what they don't have, I have realized that it's also on this other, it's, it, what they don't have is what now Algorand has added also upon. So it's it's complementary and I, I think that's very nice, yeah. Great. Edidia, do you want to add on your impression and pain points? Okay, yeah. So from my side, I think uh, to be honest, at first, it was really overwhelming understanding the whole concept of uh, Algorand, blockchain, Web3, it was a little overwhelming, but it, the, the learning was really great. Uh, what I really liked about Algorand was the use of pure uh, proof of stake compared to other uh, blockchain technologies, but uh, on Algorand, some eco-friendly uh, framework was implemented and that was really nice, but and other thing on the implementation side was I think what I found it really helpful was first trying to understand the challenge that has been given and researching what others have already implemented. So that will at least take half of the way out on the challenge while implementing the challenge. And what I've been primarily doing is reading, trying to research and read what others have implemented as well as reading the documentation entirely. And that was really helpful. Was there any point, pain point uh, in, in both of you, Martin or LGTD? Like things that was kind of, you, you might even say like could be improved. Yeah, you know, like if you were to suggest to other colleagues that in the future will uh, have to develop something like that. Uh, do we have some specific recommendation on particular pain points or something that we can maybe um, make more clear on Algorand sign that documentation. So, uh, also I, I will recommend you after the course to join the uh, Algorand Discord, the development community, and please share any kind of uh, feedback or maybe doubts that you can have on your future project that you will work on. Yeah. Anything to add, Edidia or Martin? 
Uh, okay, so what I want to work on is uh, uh, the current implementation is using pure uh, pure JavaScript, both on the front end and the back end. What I would want to implement or want to work more and also want to find more contents on the documentation of Algorand is the smart contract implementation. I know that there is good documentation of smart contracts, but I haven't gone in detail about in that section. But for my case, for my implementation, I want to deep dive in the smart contract implementation and deploy those smart contracts to the uh, blockchain. Uh, from my end, I think okay. the only thing that I'd also, uh, I'd like to uh, develop in a very particular way was the signature, the, 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 the signing of the transactions all the way, if each, each and every point where it can be able to a prompt on the other side so that it's uh, secure throughout, because I think security is the core value uh, with the algorithm. Uh, though there is that particular part I was finding was a bit, uh, uh, in, I don't know, interesting or uh, hard was where it it keeps on like uh, you will have to like sleep the system for some bit of while uh, before you carry out uh, the next uh, transaction. Yeah, so I think that was maybe just the only part which I was trying to understand uh, why uh, that has to be done. Yeah, but I think uh, otherwise it was it was a really interesting experience. Great, great, thank you. So Cosimo, then on, so like, you know, thinking the future. So from this experience to the next one, and, you know, as a junior blockchain engineer, what do you think will be the next logical step one should do? Uh, or like, how do you frame this? For example, this kind of experience um, in the portfolio, for example, if someone is applying for a job, a blockchain engineer, or an algorand, uh, you know, kind of developer, uh, application developer, somewhere. Where do you think, you know, what is your advice? Where should they should focus next um, in this direction? Yeah. So uh, I would like to to uh, give a couple of recommendations to you guys to build a portfolio. In the sense that we, uh, so keep keep improving these uh, draft application that you both had. Uh, by uh, improving the user experience a little bit of, so that it's more presentable in, in, a, in a pitch deck. And then for each of the view that you presented today, uh, just like you did, um, make clear and I like the fact that, for example, you manage to, uh, you are capable of integrating wallet with the our web application that you understood and managed uh, the asset creation process uh, with the right algorithm features that you manage also to uh, create NFT, NFTs uh, with uh, with the data shared on other architecture like EPFS and putting putting all these together, uh, or for example the fact that you were able to create a system to authenticate uh, people not just with user and password but with user and password and a wallet which. Uh, in the future will be, I think, adopted just like a news, a, an email. So people in the future will be identified also by uh, wallets, uh, just like you today are identified uh, through emails or maybe Twitter accounts. So the identity in the future will be tied to a uh, blockchain wallet. And uh, making this clear, the fact that you can authenticate uh, people through both email and wallets is very powerful. So, in a little pitch deck to present your application and your skill in Web3, I will mention all these. So, uh, creating asset, uh, signing transaction, uh, integrating technology with the uh, regular web, using Web3 storage like EPFS, and uh, yeah, I think this will be a good presentation to, to uh, highlight the fact that you really work and so on with a concrete example on web free application. Great. Thanks, I mean, I just was typing some of the things that you mentioned uh, just as part of co um, portfolio contribution. Definitely, those are keywords we should be focused, like because in particular, like 
you know, other people looking at the portfolios, they usually get tuned by a keyword. So if you could, if you don't mind, if you could just share some of, you know, the things that after this also, you know, keywords that they should be using uh, in their portfolio, um, that would be great. But sure. Yeah. Awesome. I think these are great. I'm just going to share this one also in the um, Slack just so that we, we don't forget them. Um, yeah, Arun, do you want to add anything? It's, Arun is there. Sorry, just give me one second. Switching No, nothing, nothing major from my side. Just I was, so I'm new to this field. I'm even newer than all the trainees here, but really interesting to see how everything came together. And thanks, Cosimo, for uh, working with Yabavel and to all the trainees for putting this together. Um, as everyone knows, batch six is coming soon. We're going to have the same, uh, the same focus on Web three, and we have one more project coming up. But it's fascinating to see this coming together. And I actually really like Yabavel's question around how do we demonstrate this to employers? And so for everyone, I, I hope everyone heard that this is actually a good demonstration of a project to employers. So as we go into the careers process, um, yeah, putting, framing what you're able to do and understanding how far did you get, uh, what didn't we, what didn't you manage to do due to time, what would you do next? All of those uh, are important considerations. I also think uh, kudos to Yadidya and to uh, Martin for getting this far. Right. So that's it. And I'd love to actually use, uh, I don't know if it, how, to what extent these systems are usable, but it already seems much better than our use Canva to make PDFs. So maybe yeah. we'll even use it this year. Absolutely. We will definitely, I've already, you know, Cosimo, I've already created uh, what we discussed. We have uh, 10 academy dot algo dot X, Y, Z, um, all that. So we hopefully will deploy um a combined form of that into probably issuing certificates and we'll encourage also you others to either others or them to write the smart contracts to also handle the accepting donations and stuff but we'll definitely bring it live like um and we hopefully will use it by the end of the training and, and then that means I will get back to you, Cosimo, for some questions and feedbacks and like that. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Thank you, everyone. Um, and I think that was um, really excellent. Didier and Martin, thanks. Okay. And thank you, Cosimo, for the time. I think it really helps for, for them to present it in this way um, so that it's also kind of an experience and I see already a lot of improvement. Tiny improvements, but very essential improvements from the time that they completed. So again, I know in the background you guys have done and made it really sleek, at least you know, in the time that you had while doing other projects. So you know, well done. Yeah, well done. And kudos to you guys. Keep it on. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Bye. Bye. So, uh, Ten Academy, you can stop the recording. Bye.